Hello and welcome to the basics on Lancashire Witch, an in-depth look at locomotives from the early days of steam. Lancashire Witch was one of the most influential locomotives produced by Robert Stevenson and Company at their 4th Street Works in Newcastle. Between June 1824 and December 1827, Robert had been in South America working for the Columbian Mining Association. Suffice to say, it was not a success, but whilst there, he came across a penniless Richard Trevithick, whom Robert had remembered from his childhood days as having been bounced upon his knee. To cut a very long story short, on making their way home to Britain, the ship they were travelling on first stopped to pick up survivors of a shipwreck, and then they were shipwrecked themselves. Returning to New York, the pair of them walked 500 miles, and there's probably a song in that, to see Niagara Falls. Finally, he caught a ship home. This one didn't sink. Returning to London in December 1827, he would begin one of the most important and inventive periods of his life. The Lancashire Witch was originally built for the Liverpool and Manchester Railway, but was only rarely used by them. Her boiler was designed by the inventive Henry Booth, the secretary, treasurer and general manager of the railway company. In 1827, he had been authorised to carry out experiments on boilers which burned coke. The Liverpool and Manchester Railway Act of 1826 forbade its locomotives from making smoke under a penalty of a £50 fine. Booth was given a budget of £100 and had the support of the board of directors and George Stevenson, the chief engineer. A boiler design was produced by January 1828 and Lancashire Witch was ordered by the Board of Directors on the 7th of January 1828. She was calculated to draw 20 tonnes of goods and 50 passengers, and to cost no more than £550. Whilst all this was going on in Liverpool, Robert wrote to his business partner Michael Longridge on New Year's Day 1828, I have been talking a great deal to my father, about endeavouring to reduce the size and ugliness of our travelling engines by applying the engine either side of the boiler or beneath it entirely, somewhat similarly to Gurney's steam coach. And this would, of course, be the genesis of both Lancashire Witch and Planet. George wrote to his son Robert on the 8th of January 1828 that Lancashire Witch was to be for all the engineers in the kingdom nay indeed the world, to look at. And in this observation, he was correct. Henry Booth's boiler design was a mix of old and new technologies. It was a return flue boiler, so that the firebox and chimney were at the same end. But instead of the return flue being U-shaped, that of Lancashire Witch bifurcated, so that it formed two parallel small diameter flues, which each terminated in their own chimney. Within the main flue were two water tubes in order to increase the heating surface further. Exhaust steam from the cylinders was directed into the twin chimneys. But in addition were a pair of bellows mounted under the tender worked by eccentrics. These bellows provided a stream of pressurised air under the fire, exactly as on a smithing hearth. In attempting to burn coke, Stevenson and Booth had applied existing technology of a blast furnace or a smith's hearth. This has sometimes been taken to mean that the Stevensons didn't use or understand the locomotive blast pipe. Yet George Stevenson had used them in all his locomotive designs since 1814. Importantly, the use of bellows under the tender meant that there was not the least noise about it. And this is important. The Stevensons and Booth were endeavouring to prevent locomotives being seen as a nuisance by the influential and often anti-railway landowners along the line. First, they attempted to reduce or remove the nuisance of smoke, and secondly, the nuisance of noise. Lancashire Witch is important in other ways too. Her valve gear was the first use of the Stevenson flying reverse which used a foot pedal to slip eccentrics from left to right to change between forward and reverse gear. She could also be worked expansively, using a mushroom valve in order to promote fuel and water efficiency. She was also the first Stevenson locomotive to have direct drive to the wheels, and the first Stevenson locomotive to have inclined cylinders, mounted either side of the boiler at 39 degrees. 
Booth's original barley design was not a success. It was modified with a far simpler arrangement using two large diameter parallel flues, each with its own firebox, and united at the front end. This time there was only a single chimney. Henry Booth suggested firing alternately with coke and coal, so that the coke fire would burn the volatile matter given off by the coal. Lancashire Witch was eventually delivered to the Bolton and Lee Railway, which was the first public railway to be opened in the county of Lancashire. And the Lancashire Witch opened the Bolton and Lee on the 1st of August 1828, when she was duly named. In working order, she weighed seven tons exactly, and was capable of moving loads of up to 30 tons. She returned to the Liverpool and Manchester during the summer of 1829 to help with the construction duties for three months. When this lease came to an end, the Liverpool and Manchester offered the Bolton and Lee the Samparai, which had been built by Hackworth for the Rainhill Trials. Because Samparai wouldn't burn coke and made a lot of smoke from being a coal burner, she was completely useless on the Liverpool and Manchester Railway. Lancashire Witch was overhauled by the Liverpool and Manchester, fitted with new wheels, and continued to work on the Liverpool and Manchester line until January 1830. During that month, the Bolton and Lee requested her immediate return, because the Samparai was out of repair and couldn't work. Her history after January 1830 is unknown. As George Stevenson had mentioned to Robert, Lancashire Witch was to be the model for all the world's engineers, and so she was. Whilst under construction in Newcastle, Horatio Allen, who had been sent to Britain to purchase locomotives. Whilst in Britain, he ordered four locomotives for the Delaware and Hudson Canal Company. Three from Foster and Rastrick of Stourbridge, and one from Robert Stevenson, which was ordered on the 23rd of July, 1828. The Stevenson engine, duly named the Pride of Newcastle, was completed by the end of October 1828 at a cost of £580 sterling. She was shipped from London to New York on the 1st of December 1828 and arrived on the 15th of January 1829. Unlike Lancashire Witch, the Pride of Newcastle could not be worked expansively. Pride of Newcastle was steamed on blocks before a large crowd of New Yorkers on the 13th of May 1829. She was steamed again on the 22nd of June. But Horatio Allen had difficulty in raising steam, so he carried out two modifications. He lengthened the chimney to improve the draw on the fire, and fitted a feed water heater, as carried by the Starbridge Lion. She was steamed for a third and final time in July. Thereafter, she disappears from history. The discovery of a piece of wrought iron boilerplate within a coffin-shaped box has suggested the theory that Pride of Newcastle's boiler exploded, but there is no evidence to support this. One wheel, a cylinder and piston survive today in the Smithsonian. French engineers too came to study Lancashire Witch and Pride of Newcastle, including Messieurs Coste et Perdonnet, and their writings are some of the most important books on early railways. So those are the basics on the Lancashire Witch, the first Stevenson locomotive to burn coke, the first with direct drive to the wheels, the first to work expansively, and the first without vertical cylinders. What do you think happened to Pride of Newcastle? Did she blow up or, like Starbridge Lion, was she too heavy for the track and eventually laid aside? If you have enjoyed this video, please like, share and subscribe.